footage from the Boston Marathon bombing is being scrutinized for any clues. Now software companies have ways to identify specific individuals and pick them out of a crowd. And that's what we're looking for is, is the different ways that your mouth is shaped, the different ways that your nose is shaped, the different way you know that, that the ridge is shaped and how your eyes are shaped. So all of those kind of compute into metadata and then that's how we run that search. Uh, against your face. The engineers at 3VR in San Francisco say their facial surveillance technology works like a Google search, but for faces. Show me all men, show me all women, show me all people over 30, show me every, all, everybody under 20, or show me people that look like this specific person. Those are all things we can search on. This technology can also be used to identify objects in a specific area, like a child's backpack or car. If there was a report that a red vehicle uh, fled east uh, on this street, we could run our analytic against that video and show you every single time a red vehicle went east. While facial recognition technology can cut an investigation from days or weeks to minutes or seconds, it also brings up questions and concerns over privacy and possible overuse of the technology. The surveillance technology has very good uses. I mean, it can solve crimes, it can deter crimes, but it also can all cross, sort of cross the creepy line. And not everyone might like being sub subjected to this kind of potential cradle to grave privacy intrusion. While a hat or sunglasses can stump some cameras, engineers are already working to counteract these disguises. In San Francisco, I'm Kara Suboy, CNET.com for CBS News.